Well folks, welcome back to the workshop. Today it looks like we have a Makita day. All on from the same customer, all need to be fixed up. We have two Makita resup saws, JR3070s, and three Makita hammers. This is the HM0870C. And none of them look too old, mind you. So all the same hammers and all the same resup saws, but there's a mixture between 240 and 110. So these two are 110 volt. And this one's 240 volt. Let's get cracking into this stuff. See what we can get fixed up. Start off with the resup. Now, first one doesn't look as fresh as the box. A 2018 machine. These are the 3070 resup saws. These are the heavier duty Makita resup saws. A 1500 watt motor. What's wrong with this one? And she's 240 volt. And she runs. And the variable works on the trigger. Everything seems to be working here. It's got a new foot, a new sleeve on the tool holder, and it's holding the blade. So that's a great start. What the hell's wrong with it? Right, I have to ring the customer on this one. Okay, he says it's starting and stopping. If you move the lead, it stops. Right, that's my problem. It's not this end, it's this end. So the actual lead around the moulded plug is broken somewhere. If you're at home, you could snip that off, strip back wire, stick on a new plug. But this lead is not exactly straight. It's just all coiled and twisted all over the place. So more than likely, that might not be the only weak spot. Be a weak spot somewhere else in this and normally when they fail they fail up this end so that could be about to fail as well it's cheaper in the long run just replace the whole lead and the plug so if there's any other weak spots in it it's fixed now instead of it coming back in again with the exact same fault so new lead this first one's going to be a nice simple one just be easier for the customer put a note along with it to say what he's leaving it on for mind you I didn't ask about the rest of the machines so hopefully they're straightforward too it just doesn't want to open here we go it's the wee speed control wheel it's not broken it's actually just sitting on there that back in again. So all we want is the lead down here. Yeah, we we'll just give it a quick clean first. Now, it's a lot cleaner looking. So just a resup saw. There's a hell of a lot of wiring inside of this. And that's the way they normally fit them in. Just twist them around like that. Must be just a gather up the slack Keep that grommet. Try to wrap. 
wrap them around at least a little bit. Nice one. Nice to start off with a nice easy one. One Makita Reese up saw with a new lead and plug. Right, first off the hammers. Like I was saying, these are a Makita HM0870C. What's wrong with this one? What year is this thing? 2021 actually it doesn't look young which is, isn't all that old yeah she might be old but she's not good that sounds like a mutter The leads aren't actually burnt. She is getting warm. So unless that's burnt out, burnt up a set of brushes, and it's just after fitting in a new set to see if it cured it. I would say that motor's gone. Right, that's a motor. Armature's gone on that. And she was sparking from one side. Might have just been sawn around the brush holder. But she's sparking from both. Um, so an armature for that. Brush holder and a set of brushes plus labour and vat for fitting it all. You're on to at least 205 euro. So that will have to be put in the back boiler for now. We'll check the rest of them out. And then we'll ring the customer to see what he wants to do. There's not much point in ringing them just yet, in case there's other machines I have to ring them on for prices. So let that sit now until I ring him and see if he wants to fix, fix it. And we'll move on to the next one. Now the other resup saw. Leads are looking in the same kind of condition. And he says the two of them. We're doing the same thing, so this might be a lead as well. This one's not doing night. Right. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. We'll check the lead first. Same year this machine, 2018.
Yep, lead. So another sample one. Nice one. There's at least the two recip saws up and running. Nice simple fixes. Just a lead and a plug. Right. Next up, another one of these Makita hammers. Screw must in there anyway for the cover. Same model, HM 0870C. Another one 10 volt again. What's wrong with her? running what is she hammering yes no that's rotating that's releasing the butt right nothing I can do there just have to leave that one as well and ask the customer when I'm ringing about the other one why he left this one on for a pair. Right, last one now. Again, 2021. And the last one. And the last one without a problem was 2019. Right. What's wrong with this? Right, we have power and a flashing light. That's the service light. It's not like a healthy service light means it has to shut down and be completely reserviced and revamped before they put the light out and reset it. But Makita, just like a Bosch or any other brand now, once the service light comes on, all that means is the brushes are worn out. We'll check the brushes before we do anything. And there's not much left of them. They're completely gone. Yeah, the still of that one. That's definitely not right. I actually hope the armature's okay here. And that's not good. Look at the state of that one. Same as so that one's the same as the last one. She's been consumed wrong. Been lying over to one side. Pins popped. It's actually popped out completely. And now she's been arcing across there. So that could be a problem. See that this side's nice and smooth, but if she's been making contact with the armature. And this one is all blackened. Because it hasn't actually been touching. It's been arcing across instead of actually making contact. Right.
Mind you, she doesn't look too bad. Yeah, never know. I might get away with this. So these hammers take the Makita brush CB350s. And if that's all this thing needs, it'll be a very cheap fix. Now, will she run, fart, or pop? She's running, but she's not running the best, but not much more I can do. I can't go changing the motor because there's a little spark coming from the brush holders. They're not even, actually they're not hot at all. If the armature was going bad, you'd be getting quite a bit of heat out of there. It's actually nothing. So the armature's not gone, but it's not good. It could just be the fact that the actual com bar is worn and they're concave because com bar is worn and you're putting a flat brush against it. There'll be a gap underneath. The brush just might have to bed in a little bit before that sparking stops. If it's not that, it could just be the armature's on its way out. But I can't go change the armature just because of a little spark when a set of brushes actually gets it running. The customer might not care if it's sparking at all. He just might want the thing running for as cheap as possible. He's much rather going to pay 20 euro for a set of brushes than 200 euro for replacing the whole motor whenever all it needs is just a set of brushes to get it running again. Like that there, even sparking, even if the motor is on its way out and it's about to fail, you don't know when it's going to fail. It could fail in a month's time, it could fail in a year's time, you just don't know. It depends on how much use this here hammer's getting and if he's putting another constant use. Obviously, if it's on its way out and he's using it then for the next five hours, that's not going to be great for the motor. But he's only using it intermittently and looking after the machine. That could run on for another year easily. So for now, a set of brushes gets it up and running again. And that's all we really need. So we'll also now just check the hammer, make sure it is actually hammering. And we'll give it a quick wee blowout as well because that base isn't letting much air through like that fans up underneath here and is actually sucking air up through the motor and out the front it's not getting any air with then vents blocked that could be one of the reasons why she is actually sparking right, just make sure she does actually hammer Hammering, no problem. That's her up and running again. Motor's running and she's hammering. At least the motor can actually breathe again now. So that'll do for that one. Now, we'll ring the customer and see what, what's wrong with the last one and if he wants to fix the first one. Right, now I'm even more confused. Rang the customer. He says there's one not running, one with the red light on, and one that's running but has no power. So I have to assume the one that he says is running but has no power is the one with the burnt out armature, which he says to go ahead and fix. The one with the red light on it is obviously the last one that just got the set of brushes, but then he says there's another one that is not running at all, which I'm assuming is this one. 
Wort. This is clearly running. And she's hammering as well because I actually put the chisel back in and tested her on the old transformer. And she's hammering and hitting, no problem at all. So why is this left on? Why did it stop for him? Maybe he had a problem with his transformer and they didn't realise and they assumed it was the hammer. But we'll check the obvious stuff first. Sometimes it can be a lead pull out of the plug. Which it's not. But that was fixed before now. That's the original Makita fitting for the plug. See the other one here is shorter. That's probably broken off. They rejointed it. But that clearly is not the problem. Another thing could be could be the brushes. No, it's not the brushes, they're still fairly new, and they seem to be moving. Sometimes they can get stuck in the holders and not work their way down. If that happens, it can stop hammering, give you absolutely nothing, won't work at all, you drop it on for a pair. And literally, when it's been transported on here, being rattled around, the banging can cause the brushes to move down my contact then it'll run for me but not for them but once you send it back if you don't actually do anything about it they'll get it back it'll run for five minutes and then stop again so could be the brushes if they're getting jammed up but they're not there's nothing wrong with them at all they're nice and clean basically brand new They're fine. I'll also just give the inside of this wee blow out with the compressor just to clean it out. Next thing, I'll just check the lead on here and the switch. And obviously the lead's making contact because it actually has run in. And there's no loose connections there. And none there. Ah, it's not on there. Connections are all right. And the controller seems to be okay. Right, this looks like it's fine. I was running. I'm assuming this is the one he says isn't running at all. Everything seems fine. Brushes are fine. Connectors are fine. Brush holder, lead. Cables are good, switch is good, can't actually see anything wrong with it. The only other thing it could be is the field. Now, I'm guessing more than likely it's probably, probably was his transformer or an extension lead he was using. But now it's on here, we have to check. There's a broken field that can sometimes run and then not run. The connection's broken. Once she gets hot, she can expand, break the connection, it stops running. I'll not run it again until the machine cools down. When I get it nice and cool, she contracts again, makes the connection, and she runs. She'll run again until she heats it up, then it breaks again. Very odd time that can happen. And normally it's just a connector, just a wee spade connector on the field down here that snaps off. The only way to tell is to take out the field and look. That requires a lot of stripping down. Not 
tool holder could probably do the little clean out as well. Now that, we, now that we're at it. bearings just along the sleeve lock that plate into place get out the bearings pull the plate out all that just to get the cover off so we can access these screws off them brushes so they don't interfere with the armature coming out. And the armature looks good as well. None of the resin is cracked, it's not badly worn down here, no burn marks on it. But the main thing we want to check is just to get a good look at the field. You can pull off this brush plate and get an idea of what it's like. Better just to pull the whole thing out so you can check it properly. You'll be able to check these connectors here. If you just pull off the brush holder, you can give it a wee wiggle, see if they're slack. But you won't be able to actually see the cables themselves, these wires. And none of them are broken. Connectors for the brush holder aren't damaged either. There are no burn marks, there are no wear marks. It's not loose at all. In other words, there's nothing wrong with that field. I'd have to guess it's either this fellow's transformer or the extension lead he was using, or even if he was using the generator, maybe it was the generator that was at fault. That Definitely nothing wrong with that field controller. It's the only other thing it could be, but generally they either work or they don't. Once they pack up and stop working, they're not just going to start working again on their own. So that's more than likely fine. Leads, cables, connectors, switch, everything else is fine. That was just a waste of time stripping this thing down. All that for nothing. For now, I need to get this thing back together again. Just watch them brushes, they move back in. If you force that too much, you're going to break them.
Right, that's her. And it was a total waste of time. Not a thing wrong with that. Has to be in his transformer or his lead. I've checked everything on it. There's nothing else that could have stopped that from running. So that one has no fault found. Last but not least, we're back to this one. It's been a few weeks. The part is on and I need to get this sorted now. Hopefully this will be simple enough, just a quick armature swap, and it shouldn't need anything else. Keep that out of the way. Band of her holding them on is gone. You have to take the top cover off to get on here to access the screws. Spring missing there too. There's meant to be a spring on top of here holding this stuff down. Get that hit. And there's four ball bearings here. Get them out. Then you can take out this ring. Sleeve off, then you can take off that cover. Nice, no. she's not an old machine. 2021 but she's done a hell of a lot of work look how much wears on that armature that's done a right bit and there's the one that's gone and there so that's gone hoping and so this should be okay. Mm, it's a wee bit dry actually. I'll just crack it open as well and see what it's like. Shouldn't be able to hear that striker going back and forth. Sometimes, sometimes that can indicate a dry chamber. Yeah, so you really should be hearing a wee bit of compression back here. Hearing nothing. So more than likely, these O-rings in here are worn as well. Which would make sense if it's done that much work. So we'll just replace them too. Be adding dirt into this. Ah. 
Vauxhall Weehaw here today. BR Allen keys and new Weehaw drivers. Makes light work of this stuff. See, that shouldn't just fall out like that. You can see a shoulder on that as well. So we'll need O-rings there. Looks dry down there too. Yeah, that's dry all right. Literally dust on side. Fluoride ring is gone as well, so we'll have to replace that. That's going to need a clean. And this is going to need a clean. Never seen one that dry in the tool holder end before. Fair enough. Striker hammer getting dried out, but that's very bad. Replace that o-ring too. So we'll just wash that. And actually we'll just wash this whole thing out. Everything else is okay. Problem now is I was not anticipating needing an O-rings nor a fluoride ring. I'm not sure if I have them now. Too big. There's seems to be nope not good where else would I have them an 0870 and I don't have a box for an 0870 so what'll be a similar size 3210 would be too big 3000 is too old the older version is an 0860 there we go that's right the O-rings and for the basket boxes Sometimes we kept some of the fluoride rings on here. Handy way to store parts. Biscuit boxes. Sold film tubes. Great for wee small parts. Easily access them and see what's on them. But we used to put the fluoride rings on oil. Because they're well hard to fit. Sometimes the oil helped slide them on. That's it. Greased up and all. That could have been some crack. Waiting two weeks on the armature and having to order more parts again and waiting longer. Luckily we have them. Now to wash it out.
See if we can get this done nice and quick. Because it's nearly six o'clock. He wants to go home. the awkward bus. The o-ring should be fine underneath. It's just a fluoride ring that's gone. These can wear out. it out. We put it under this oil to try and soften it up, but it doesn't do anything. It's just a tight fit. And there's only one way to get it on, and that's just to force it. You do get a little jig for this, just a bore, that's the right size. But otherwise, you just have to be a bit of ignorant with it. It will stretch out as you're putting it on. But she's sitting inside a tight bore when you put her together. Just make sure that o-ring is sitting down full. Awkward as hell the first time you try to do that. But eventually it goes on. That slides on here. steel washer and rubber ring still inside the pipe so we'll leave them in there push that in reinstall your c-clip that but good gob of grease and your hammer another gob of grease you can go to the piston
screws at the bottom for attaching your cover. Nope. Oh, almost forgot. Make sure that steel washer's on there. That's just to stop the hammer pipe. Rub it against the aluminium housing on here. Just more for wear than anything else. Best not to try and tighten them bolts with the drill. So if you go too hard, that thing can take off. Catch a finger or something. If it starts spinning, it catches you. Will be painful. Too soon. Forgot I don't have the armature in yet. Fill that with grease now, it's all just going to pour back out again. Best install the armature first. Now we also need a bearing. It doesn't come with the top bearing. That's a 6201. To press that on. That on. Put it down on the place so we can finish filling the oil or the grease. You actually buy Makita oil for this or grease. Come on, we threw 30 mil tubes, maybe about 5 or 10 euro each. I'm actually using healthy. That's the part number there if you ever want to order from healthy. It comes in a kilo tub. Same sort of stuff. Perfect for hammers. And if you only need a little bit for a Makita hammer, that's the part number there. That's the actual hammer grease. Comes in a 30 mil 30 milliliter tube. Perfect amount for this. I'm going to put about 30 into this as well with this healthy grease. It's plenty for this size of hammer. Make sure everything runs smoothly.
Just machine takes a CB350 Makita brushes. Nice big long brush. So you get plenty of run time out of them. These are just what the actual handle screws onto. Without them, there's nothing for the screws to go onto. Your old band is just to keep them on. These four steel balls in place. Push them down into that steel plate. And the steel plate was over the top of those to hold the steel balls on. And a spring holds the plate on. And everything else is just like a standard hammer. Spring, retainer, stopping pans, a chamfered steel dust for actually locking, rubber ring. Steel washer, C clip to hold them all down, plastic sleeve, and the cap. And that should be it. One Makita HM0870C from 2001 with a new armature, brushes, o-rings, seal and grease and a washout. She's now running as smooth and as quietly as a brand new machine. Right, just 
just to make sure she definitely hammers. Nice one. That's running perfectly. Here at the beginning, just a wee bit light in the hammer. That's the grease actually working its way around and getting into the right places. After a few seconds in, the hammer comes on full strength. That's her, up and running, keeping another man running for a few more years. If you have any broken tools yourself, or a broken anything, why don't you strip it apart, see if you can fix it. It's broken anyway, you have nothing to lose. Give her a go. At worst, you'll definitely learn something. Thanks for watching, folks. That's that lot of stuff done, and we'll keep this man happy and running for a good while longer. If you're liking the videos, give us a wee like and a follow. And if you want, you can also hit the notification button to get notifications whenever there's a new one posted. Or if you want to, you can also become members now to support the channel. Cheers. Thanks for watching.